What's happening, what's happening, what's happening? Of course, you know it's your boy, B-Hot Radio, shout in. Stepping in the building, I got an actor that's been tearing up your big screen, your small screen, <laughs> any place you can find a screen in this thing. Demars Harvey, yes, what's sir. good with it, boss? What's the deal, my baby? Man, feeling good, feeling great. Now, I mean, take me to the top, man, because, okay. I mean, at what point was it that you realized that you was going to be an actor in here? And then also, what was it that made you tackle it the independent route? Man, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it started for me early. You okay. know, I, I, uh, I grew up in the performing arts, and then I kind of got away from it in high school. I ended up playing sports, yeah, you yeah. know, playing playing football. And then um, as I, you know, started living life a little bit, I just got led back to it. And, uh, you know, I had one particular opportunity. Um, I was modeling at the time, and um, I seen a production that happened in downtown of my city. Mm hmm I said, I walked up to the producer, asked them, you know, if they needed any extras. Yeah. The producer looked at me and said, yeah, you got a white shirt? I said, you know what? I sure do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Going, Damn well, I ain't had no white shirt. <laughs> but it was all good because it was the hustle in me. I'm like, yeah. all right, I got one. He said, go get it and come back. Ran five blocks to the gas station, go get me that $5 <laughs> that holly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Put it together, man, and the rest was history, man. So, um, you know, that's just how I've been moving and shaking. Um, and independently, you know, people say, well, listen, man, you you know, being from the city or being from a, a smaller town that's not necessarily um, moving like Hollywood, mm -hmm. you can't do it. You can't make it with well, shit. I'm living proof, man. You know, you can still do it. You know what I mean? It just means that you got to move a certain way. So I just travel. Okay. You know what I mean? And independently, things open up for me uh, because of the hustle. Okay. You know? When you talk about that small city and town, what are you talking about? Ah, oh, man, Detroit, man. Okay. Seven miles. Stand up, baby. Okay. Now, yeah. I mean, with Detroit, though, it's always been a slick scene going oh, on up man. there at the same time now. Yeah, man. Detroit, man. Detroit hustle hard, man. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it's... It, you know, we known for the automotive industry. We known for Motown. You know, and now we establishing the film. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And obviously, Hollywood is Hollywood. You know, I don't think anything would change. But we definitely, independently rising for sure. Now, when you think about your filmography, man, I mean, you got a lot of damn films you done been in in this thing. <laughs> yeah. What was the one that you felt like just really took you all the way up through there and you had the best time doing and got the most reaction from? Wow. So I'm going to separate those. Like, okay. So the, the best time that I had on set filming a movie was the movie Neon Detroit Nights. A lot of people not mm -hmm. really hip to that movie, but that was probably my best experience um, and fun, you know, based off of the set. Mm -hmm characters all of that good stuff um i think the movie that kind of set the tone mm -hmm. well allowed people to really get a chance to see who i am mm -hmm. was uh first lady okay um first lady did that and then uh coming back around uh years later uh these men for everybody gave me another platform yeah. to be able shout out to lisa brown um gave me another platform to be able to uh for people that didn't know who i was to, to find out who i am exactly at what point did you uh, become coined Mr. Tubi in this Oh, thing? man. You know what's crazy? <laughs> to be honest with you, I think this year, 2022, is yeah. when I start really paying attention to it. You know, last year, people, you know, the pandemic shifted things, and it made people sit down. That's right. So a lot of people had an opportunity to really put their eyeballs on me. You exactly. Know? And then so, like, people start realizing, like, damn, he got this movie out. He got that movie out. He got this you know what, this nigga running Tubi, <laughs> you know? And then so people will start putting that Mr. Tubi moniker up under my name, and I just was like, you know what, I'm a humble dude, so I kind of like shunned it at first. Yeah. But I just take it, man, because I feel like, you know, it's just respect. Exactly. It's love, and I genuinely appreciate that, you know? So, yeah. Break down that grind of being an independent actor at the same time, man. Man, it, you know, like we was talking earlier, like it's mm -hmm. really like being an independent rap artist. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or independent artist in general. Um, especially the way you have to move, you know, mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to dealing with people about your money, when it comes to dealing with, with people, <laughs> um, you know, just about the business side of things and then yeah. having to actually be an artist at the same time, yeah. preparing yourself to film, uh, preparing yourself emotionally for the character, yeah. um, you know, doing the grunt work behind the scenes that people don't get to see, you know, the, the, the character development, the working with your castmates, the working with directors, you know, the nuances of being an actor, yeah. um, but then having to, again, work independently. So going to get your work and going to these auditions, paying for this. Another thing people don't understand, listen, if you don't invest in yourself as an independent artist. Come on, man. 
you not going to get nowhere. You have to make sacrifices. You I'm have you. to be able to invest in yourself because ain't nobody going to invest in you if mm-hmm. you don't invest in yourself first. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's really what it boils down to. And I had that mindset early. Yeah. Like, yo, all right, I got to take this thing on. Like, you know, like I'm an independent rapper. Like, I got to hit it hard. And I did, man. I've been, I've been banging ever since. How do you feel, though? In this new world that we living in, so especially coming out of the pandemic when everybody was sitting at home watching these movies and then you seeing your star shine and grow at the same time, how do you feel not having to go through Hollywood to hit the hood? You know what? I'm going to keep it a buck, man. That's just God's grace. Come on now. That's completely God's grace because I didn't, I'm not, I never set out to be, you know, um, this just, you know, bigger than life, you know, type of thing, man. I just, I really enjoy what I do. I, right. I love this craft. And so um, it just so happened, man, through God's grace and the gifting that he gave me, man, it, things start to open up for me without me even really paying attention to what was happening. That's right. You know, and then it was crazy is, you know, you get people that aspire to be where you are or become jealous because they felt like, man, you doing more than me or you getting more opportunities. But really, man, I'm just putting myself in position. I'm doing the work yeah. that people don't see. Come on. And then again, like I said, God's grace. So things just start as I ascend, man, you know, another thing too, I try to bring people with me, but everybody, right. like we was talking earlier again, man, everybody <laughs> ain't meant to go. Come on now. So, you know, I just, I pace myself, bro. Now I'm in a position to where, you know, I get calls for opportunities. That's right. Um, and so I haven't necessarily auditioned for certain things. There's some things that I will audition for yeah. respectfully because um, I'm never above that. And I always believe in continuously growing yeah. um, as an artist because you never can learn too much, especially yeah. in this. Um, but, yeah, man, I, I just I grind, man, consistently. The freedom that comes with being independent, man, do you enjoy that? And would you be willing to give that up for the mainstream? Um Yes and no. Um, and, I, and I say no first and foremost because um, I feel like being independent, I can't move how I want to move. Facts. You know, um, and I, I have a, a choice in terms of being able to say yes or no to certain things. Yeah. When you get to a certain level, it's like, <laughs> and this is your living, you're like, all yeah. right, bro. I might have to take this opportunity if it's on a bigger scale, Facts. you know, depending on what it is. Now, every, I got my limits. There's certain things I'm just not doing yeah. um, and not giving up. But, Come you on. know, I feel like at that level, if it if it if uh, the opportunity presents itself, then, yeah, you know, I'm going to take advantage of it for sure. Platforms like Tubi and YouTube and stuff like that, man. I mean, what is it like creating content for those platforms mm-hmm. and the receptions that you receive off of that? Has Do you feel like that's even the playing field? Because to be honest with you, YouTube, Tubi, Amazon, Netflix, uh, all of this stuff is really the same thing in the same basket. Hey, hey, if you got a smart TV, <laughs> you're watching all that shit. Yeah, man. And you know what's crazy is like, you know, people, especially the black community, like people shun or speak bad on Tubi, but Tubi is, I think, number three. Niggas is making money on Tubi. Let, man, listen, now let's okay, talk about that. Okay, and I know that. that for facts. People people talking smack, man, but people really making some real money. <laughs> and trust me, I know because they're making it using my face <laughs> and my talent. You did? So, but that being said, man, you know, I'm work, I'm about to start working on producing mm-hmm. my own films. Mm-hmm. But yeah, man, I, people shun Tubi, man, but Tubi gave uh, especially uh, independent black filmmakers an opportunity man to to showcase their gifts and talents yeah. writers and directors and 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 um you know uh, actors you know so i really feel like people need to calm down a little bit you know tote that thing down some man cuz it's really another um avenue for black the black community to create wealth and I think that's the issue, you know, from the outside looking in. I think a lot of people don't understand that mm-hmm. you got a lot of wealthy folks coming off of this damn Tubi. Yeah, when you cut man. that middleman off oh, and uh, all of them extra, you know, co-signers mm-hmm. out of the business, you get all of that money directly to yourself. So it equals up to the same amount that it would have yeah, equaled man. up to in Hollywood, if not more. Listen, man, when you when you really think about it and you, it boils down to um, – what how the stipulations that Hollywood put on uh, independent filmmakers or independent um, actors, mm-hmm. you know, and you cut that thing out, like you said, yep. you know, and you create the platform for people to showcase their gifts. Come on. Now, yeah, we can compete. You know, we might not have the budgets that Hollywood have. That's cool. But when you get 
a collective group of individuals together who actually know what they're doing and professional and care about this craft, then you can really create great film. Well, I'm gonna break it down to you like this: How many big budget Hollywood movies have you seen that was some BS? Man, I mean a plethora. <laughs> and I got a partner, Curtis Snow, Snow on the Bluff. Mm -hmm. That wasn't no big budget Hollywood movie, nah, man. but it was one of the most strict. Actually, Netflix built they platform off, off of the of back that. of mm -hmm. that movie and then yeah, when they went I'm back hip. to go get their money they told them to go to hell i'm hip bro you see what i'm saying yeah man and that's one of the that's another thing man you know <laughs> people people take uh other people's gifts and talents man and will establish a foundation and then run off with it uh. <laughs> and that's so unfortunate because you yeah. know so many especially in the black community man so many people man are so gifted and talented man yeah. and and you know we we don't get the light shine like we should. Yeah. But when we do, a lot of us not prepared. That's Thanks. another thing, you know. Thanks. So I think being properly prepared mm -hmm. for what you're working towards or what you're praying for is also um, essential. At what point was it that you realized, you said, okay, now y'all done made a killing off of my face. It's time for me to go ahead and uh, crank out me to a movie be honest, this day. To be honest, it's been probably about two years solid okay. where I was like, all right, man, you know, I'm, you know, but I'm getting movies back to back, so I'm still you doing working. working, you know, so it's like, all right, all right, well, at the same time, I'm properly planning for my coming out. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? And I said yeah. 2023 is going to be that for sure. 2023, um, I definitely am putting out movies. I'm put out a series i'm working with some some talented people that's another thing too man i spoke about working with talented people um you know i believe in the black woman you yeah. know what i mean and there's so many talented black women in this industry that don't get a real shine or real light put on them um but i know so many talented black women um from directors to writers um to to producers um that really are setting a tone and the mark. Yeah. And uh, I want to work with as many as I possibly can because I feel like when you when you're building a tribe, you can't have a, a solid tribe without a, a black woman. Come on you. now. You know what I mean? So I'm if you have you. multiple, man, listen, we lit. So yeah, that's 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 my objective, man. That's my mindset. Um as I move forward, just shining a light on our people, um, but also giving um, honor to the black women in our communities, man, that are gifted and talented as well. What stories is it that you want to tell when you get on this production side of things, though? Man, to be honest with you, you know, people know me for playing these roles that are, uh, you know, shysty and vindictive and, <laughs> and beater Crazy, and womanizer, <laughs> man. <laughs> but but none of those things are me in real life. So, so I, all of my movies, nah, for real. I just you. seen those things yes. so I can mimic them. Come on now. Um, but... The stories that I want to tell, man, are going to be inspirational. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to do some things that are, you know, similar to what I've done. That's right? entertaining. Right, that's entertaining. Yeah. But I'm going to tell stories in a way that will draw people in mm -hmm. and pull on their heartstrings and make you think, right? Exactly. Um, but also that will shine light on certain things like, you know, mental health. That's right. You know, and especially in the black communities, you know, um, things that you don't necessarily see from certain particular urban movies come on now um so yeah man I, I i feel like god gave me a vision for a particular thing and i feel like he's gonna lay that thing out for me and i'm just gonna follow that plan through for people that don't understand though i mean how much money can be made as a producer mm -hmm. dropping movies on tubi man it's a lot man now i ain't gonna talk particulars but yeah you know i think that if you do it properly and you 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 establish the right relationships, you can make a substantial amount of money. Yeah. You know, from from producing film. Mm -hmm. um, again, it's just really about having the right people around you yeah. and putting out a quality product that that people will want to come back and see again or want to tell their people about. You know what yeah. I mean? That's again my objective and my motive moving forward is to only do quality work, man. Exactly. You know? Getting prepared for those different parts and stuff, man. How do you mentally get your head in the game for this Ooh, stuff, Demars? Oh man, you know it, it's 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 funny you ask me that because I'm gonna keep it a buck, man. Sometimes it's a challenge, you Thank know. You. And, and I say that only because you know 
you think about the psychology of because I study psychology, right? So yeah. you think about the psychology that goes into who we are as individuals. Yeah. You know, there's certain nuances that you have to develop for particular characters. There's certain things that uh, quirks about these different characters. So as I'm developing, as I break down my script mm-hmm. and I look at the the progression um uh, and scale of this character, I'm always keeping in mind, like, okay, well, what got this person to that? So I do a who, what, when, where, and why. Mm. So whenever I'm coaching somebody, I try to give that as well yeah. because that helps me break down characters. Yeah. It helps me understand, like, why is this person acting like this? Mm. You know, where do they come from? You yeah. know, who were they before these things happened? So all of those things, as I'm developing the character, it just it helps me uh, establish a base and a foundation. Yeah. Now, Working through that thing and then completing my job, coming out of that character is a whole nother ball game. Okay, you know, and I'm, yeah. <laughs> oh, so shit. sometimes you gotta. So don't tell me you still crazy after the movie. Nah, <laughs> bro. <laughs> nah, I don't take the I don't take those things home with me, man. Okay. Um, but I will say that you know sometimes I have to take a day to kind of collect my decompress. Thoughts. Yeah, man, because when, especially because I give so much to what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, that when you. When you when you do that, sometimes you can get lost. Yeah, you know, I don't know if you hear heard about Michael B. Jordan, but he talked about having to go see a therapist. You know, after doing one of his movies, I think it was uh, Black Panther. Damn. You know, yeah, man, because when you when you fully commit to a character, you are bringing life to um, another person. You're That's giving right. life, your essence to another being. Yeah. So when you think about it from that perspective, man, I think that's another thing that separates me from a lot of other artists, right? Yeah. And, and that's not comparing anybody, but I pride myself on committing to that level. Yeah. And um, I feel like that's just me respecting the craft, you mm-hmm. know, and respecting that human being that has to be created in order for people to believe that this is a real person. Exactly. So, yeah. So now, moving forward, man, I mean, what other projects you working on right now? Man, so uh, initially I came down here, man, to work with my guy Rob, man, on um, a movie we was uh, putting together called Moral Enemies. Okay, now. Um, and then um, I got uh, a the Dirty D season two, gonna, okay. we're going to be shooting um, in January again. Um, and then I got a, another, uh, what is it, a Trust Nobody. Shout out to my man, man Steve-O, man. Yeah, always, what up, though, Steve-O? Man, always put me together, man. I appreciate you, Steve-O. Um, we're doing Trust Nobody 2. If y'all haven't seen Trust Nobody 1, go check that out. It's definitely uh, lit. Um, but yeah, man, I got Trust Nobody 2 coming up And then I got another series that I should be working on Probably the end of January So we working, man And then after that, I'm going to start working on producing my films The Dirty D, man Get mm. more in-depth into that Because that one went crazy as well man, the dirt, again, Come on now Shout out to Miss LB, man Lisa yeah. Brown, man um, The Dirty D mm-hmm. went crazy <laughs> And I don't even think that people understand Like what it took to get that done, you know? And this is another thing that I talk about when I was talking about, you know, uh, showing love to the black women in film because Mm -hmm. Miss Lisa Brown did that on her own. You know, her own, put up her own money. And, um, you know, even casted me, you know what I mean? Like I I get so much, unfortunately, so much hate, man, because when you working towards something and and, and in this business, you have to be an independent artist. You kind of have to like sometimes uh, stand up for yourself. Facts. Stand up for what you you feel like you deserve, or how people should treat you. You so damn right. You, when people don't know how to separate that from being talent, you yeah. know, and treating talent, you know, differently based off of that. That being said, you know, she uh she stood her ground when it came to casting me for that man, and uh, I love her man for real. She she always got my back. I got her. So um, the Dirty D man is going. The Dirty D season two is going to be incredible. I think people are not ready for you know how she put it out this time man and i'm excited i'm excited because you know now you know there's a lot of negative going around people making comparisons to this then and third but man people don't understand like the dirty d is getting ready to shake up the world okay when it comes to those industry politics Uh tomorrow How the hell have you been able to navigate that? And what has that been like for you in the game? And then even on the independent side of the game, you're like, y'all niggas still on this BS over here. What the hell's oh, going man. on? That that part right there, bro. Like, yeah. it's like, I feel like, man, listen, life is too short, man. And and there's no reason for anybody to be beefing or competing with anybody because it's enough for us to all eat. That's right. You know what I mean? Um, And, and you, get, you get people that just 
come in and don't really know the business. Yeah. You know, they got hustle but don't know the business. Mm. And so when you're working with people that do know the business, sometimes that causes conflict. Yeah. You know, sometimes you think that you can take advantage of certain people, yeah. you know, and, and if they don't know any better, you know, those type of scenarios, you yeah. know, people not paying, you know, or, you know, again, having to – you know, uh, go back and forth about what you feel your worth is and somebody not feeling the same. Like, yeah. you know, all of those type of things, man, happen. And that's, you know, that's a part of life. That's a part of the business, which is cool. Mm -hmm. But I say at the end of the day, man, you know, you lead with respect, you leave with respect. That's you right. know what I'm saying? So that's just how I move, man. And I said when I got in this game, you know, I always want to build real relationships with real people. Come on, You now. know, and um, those that are real, you know, we still kick it, we still rock, we still work. Those that not, you know, we go our separate ways and keep it moving. Exactly. You know, what advice do you have for the next up and coming artist and actor that's trying to get in the game? Because I see so many people, Demars, that want to get in there, man, but they yeah. just can't figure out how to get off the damn point. <laughs> man, listen, the first things first, and I get this question all the time, man. People hit me up all the time. First things first is to study the craft. Mm. You know, don't don't look at a couple films or look at some of your homies that made it or, or doing things and be like, damn, I could do that, too. Yeah. I'm about to get into acting. But you don't know nothing. Of the first thing about what it means to be an actor or an actress. Come on. Study now. the craft and take it seriously. Right. Um, you know, find a mentor, find an acting coach, you know, take the time to really learn what it means and to study this craft. And then also, you know, get you some quality headshots. You know, <laughs> find you a good photographer. It's not hard. Social media is open yep. up the door for people to connect. Find you a great photographer and get you some quality professional uh, acting headshots. Mm -hmm. um, prepare you a resume. Even if you don't have any work, yep. that's cool. Just yep. put together some stuff. And, 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 and when you get your opportunity to get in front of some people, you know, tell them what you can do. Let your talent show forth let the work show forth Flex. um and then network as much as possible Come on. you know um find auditions in other cities travel again this goes back to investing in yourself you got to travel you got to network you have to listen when i got mm -hmm. after i got that opportunity when i uh, walked up on that producer That's uh, right. you know 12 years ago my second opportunity came from craigslist bro <laughs> I got a I got a commercial from Cla Craigslist. Are you serious? Hustle, man. You got to hustle, bro. So that's that's really what I would you know the advice that I give anybody when they ask me you know that question is yeah. you know it's just be mindful of the craft, respect it. At the end of the day, at what point though, Demars, did you did you realize that you had that motion? Because I'm over here, I'm going through your IMDb as we speak, <laughs> and uh, I'm on number fifty. Okay, it's like, okay, yeah. this guy right here has been acting his ass off. Man, I appreciate so, that, So, I mean, how do you even find time to get in between all of these different places independently, man? This is ridiculous. Man, again, God's grace. Yeah. Listen, I I, I can't. I, sometimes it, it baffles me, man, because even, like, all of my films are not on IMDb. There are films that I've done that people, you know, ha are not releasing and, and, and stuff like that, yeah. which is cool. But So, I, I think I have probably about now, like, 37 films yeah. um, to date, eight stage plays that I've done. Um, and uh, you know endless commercials and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. ah, man, I'm I'm just grateful. Independently, is it it hasn't been easy, you know. Um, I've had to sacrifice a lot, and people don't see that side of it too. You don't, they only see the glorious things. Yeah. But realistically, man, I've lost money, I've lost homes, I've lost family, I've lost people um, who I thought were close to me. Um, you know, all type of crazy things, man, just to chase my dream. And so, like, people ask me, too, like, would you ever quit? Hell no. Why? I didn't gave it. I didn't. Listen, we're not talking about the conspiracy sacrifice. I, but I personally <laughs> have exactly. sacrificed time a tremendous money. amount of time and exactly. money investing into chasing my dream. And I know at some point in time, my opportunity is going to present itself where I'm going to be able to extend the hand to the next, you know. Answer so, me this. See, yeah. it's it's a what you just said makes so much sense to me, and it takes me in so many different directions, Demars. One is doesn't even matter if those so called other uh, opportunities even come in when mm -hmm. you are independent artists doing what you're doing, making your money, living yeah. how you want to live. And then also, when you're going through so many losses. How the hell did you keep your head in the game? Because, you know, some folks take their ball and go home, man, after the yeah. first loss. Not yeah. after the 12th. Listen, man, you know, 
I say this, bro, especially being an artist, you know, artists are sensitive about their work. That's but right. artists in general, I think, are just, um, we carry a certain um, sensitivity to the world around us mm -hmm. when you're true, when you're born artists, right? Yeah. Um, and so for me, I have my moments, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not built with uh, alligator skin. I have my moments, but I, I keep those moments tight. Yeah. Tuck to me between me and God, yeah. and I pray, and um, you know God has graced me, man, with an ambition, um, ambitious spirit, man. That just even when things look dim or gloom, I'm like, all right, this is just a stumbling block. This is a, a test, or this is a way for me to grow. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a firm believer in like, man, everything is is put here to force us to grow, whatever direction that may be. So um, when I see things happening, man, that are, you know, not necessarily up to par or where it should be, man, I just look at it as an opportunity, like I said, to grow. So um, that's really what I focus my mindset on. It's, it's all mindset. You know, what you believe you can achieve, you know, in your heart and your soul and your mind, man, you can do it if you have the, the, the willpower to push through. Okay, so now I gotta ask this. Do you want Hollywood? I was just talking to somebody oh, the other day. I said, yeah, you got the major leagues. I was talking to Turk from the Hot Boys. I said, you got the major leagues, but you also had the Negro leagues, yeah, okay? Man. Yeah, and they yeah, were equally yeah. as successful, For sure. okay? It wasn't no. until assimilation came that it fucked uh -huh. up the Negro leagues, yeah, but they were man. doing pretty damn good they were. before they assimilated, okay? Yeah, yeah. so. Do you want Hollywood or do you just want to create your own Negro League? Um, to be honest with you, I, I'm I'm torn. Yeah, I'm yeah. keep it a buck. I'm, I'm torn with you because I feel like you know my talent definitely can set Hollywood on fire. I'm with you. You know, given the right opportunity in the right position, I know for a fact that. Um, I would work extremely hard. Yeah. And I would damn sure try to work outwork everybody because I've done it independently, right? Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I do want to have creative control over some of the things that I I want to do moving forward. Yeah. So I'm i I'm not saying that I'm shutting that door again if that opportunity presents itself, I'm gonna take it. Yeah. But I'm not going to close myself off from still being a creative. Yeah. Especially being in, in the world we living in now, I think it's essential, even for those that live in Hollywood, that you know, I see you see so many incredible um black producers um in the game, yeah. uh, black directors or black writers who are, you know, uh, have, are sta established in Hollywood, right. but they still do their independent thing, right? Come on now. Um, and doing that also creates other opportunities for other independent artists that are trying to come in, get in the exactly. game. Exactly. So yeah, now I wouldn't cut it off because I feel like it's a cycle, man. And yeah. in order to keep that door uh, open both ways, I feel like you kind of, you kind of now you, you have to do both. Exactly. Yeah. Lastly, man, if somebody's trying to book you for a movie or they just want to follow you, you got fans over here watching it all over the place. How can they contact you? Man, uh, Instagram is my only social media platform. Okay. You can um, get at me um, on my social media, DM me. Uh, my email is on there as well. But my um, Instagram is at Demars Harvey, at D-E-M-A-R-I-S, last name Harvey, all one word. Um, or my uh, email at Demars Harvey at gmail.com. Let it up. Demars, yeah, appreciate you coming man, through this thing, King, man. I appreciate you, Wish brother. you nothing but the best and much success. Thank you, King. Be high ready, yo, shouty. Demars Harvey. Yes, Holler at y'all in a minute, man. Appreciate we gone. It.